And now for something completely different. Hi everyone, so I thought let's do something a little bit different today. I picked up a copy of Star Wars Imperial Assault, a board game from Fantasy Flight Games. So let's have a look uh, through an unboxing and a first look at the kind of gameplay we can expect from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Now first and foremost this is a board game. It has miniatures, similar to Games Workshop in that regard, but it also has cards, board pieces and, well, plenty of rule books as you might expect. Now what first attracted me to this particular game is I've been looking for a more involved board game for a while, but something that wasn't as complicated as some of the other Fantasy Flight games. Now this dice system is based on the old Descent board game, so it's fairly familiar, and more importantly, it's quite a straightforward set of game mechanics from a point of view of understanding dice rolls, damage, and uh, defense. A much easier system to get into for people who've never played these style of games before. So what do we get in the box? Well, firstly we get four booklets. A learn to play starting guide, which basically is a tutorial, takes you through all of the core components of gameplay. We have the campaign guide. This sets out a really interesting set of stories, all linked as part of a campaign. The rules reference guide gives you more in-depth information about each of the rules, as well as being the rule book to rule them all. Anything that might be mentioned in any of the other books is superseded by rules in the rule book, but at no point is it overly complicated. The skirmish guide allows you to play those one-off battles, as it were, without having to rely on the campaign. You get a set of stickers to help you mark up the squads for your models and various different game pieces and board pieces as well, everything from counters to physical locations. It's all beautifully hand-drawn, as it were. It looks gorgeous. I mean, it really is beautiful looking artwork. We then have the hero cards, a various sets of action cards, weaponry cards, boosts and bonus cards. Also included in this pack was Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, and yet more cards. The dice, as I've said, are very reminiscent of the Descent dice pack, allowing for a pretty easy way of being able to read the dice quickly. You're not going to have to add anything up particularly here. You get a selection of different models as well, both for the Rebel side and for the Imperials. The Imperials have a lot more models, including an ATST Walker. The heroes, there are six of them that you can play with, but also additional heroes that you can take advantage of as well through booster packs, as you might expect with a game of this type. Now, all in all, this is a bumper box, really, of very cool stuff. All highly detailed artwork, really nicely detailed models, although maybe not as detailed as you might expect from, say, Games Workshop's plastics these days. We also found there was a slight problem with the ATST model, where his cannons, which go onto the front, don't seem to fit properly. There seems to be a moulding issue there. Hopefully Fantasy Flight will replace that for me. But overall, what you get in the box is pretty stonking, really. There's certainly a good £80 worth of stuff here. It does feel like good value for money. Having played through the initial tutorial and the first map of the campaign, we found this game to be very easy to get to grips with. Once you've actually played through the tutorial, obviously step by step, you actually have a very good idea as to how all of these game mechanics works. Obviously there's some more nuanced options there, which are available through the more standardised rulebook, but certainly the idea of being able to just quickly jump into a game using the rulebook feels very reminiscent of many great board games out there. One thing that always annoys me with Fantasy Fight games is when you end up with a rule book that's effectively 150 pages long, and before you can even spend any time trying to play a game, you have to work your way through the rule book backwards and forwards, forwards and backwards multiple times, usually stopping halfway through a game to attempt to check out a rule. With uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault, things feel a lot more fluid, and even when you do need to go back to the book, it's all there really easily to understand. Occasionally you might have to talk to one of your colleagues while you're playing and just say, what would your interpretation of this be? 
but normally it's never something where it's a sticking point. It's normally pretty obvious and easy to move forward. That's something I really like about this game. They've not tried to make this too complicated. They've not added in layer upon layer upon layer of RPG that's getting in the way. In some respects, you could describe this as more of an RPG light style of game. It's more of a strategy game in many respects, and I really like that. We're planning a big playthrough this weekend, where we'll probably go through a good bulk of the campaign. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks' time to give you a final verdict on Star Wars Imperial Assault. But if this is the style of game that you're kind of looking for, something to break away from a computer, get some friends around, have a few beers, and play something completely different, then Star Wars Imperial Assault appears to be well worth checking out. There's a bumper box of stuff here for your money, it's not just all bits of paper and card. The models are nicely detailed, not as detailed as other companies out there, but certainly a really good representation of the Star Wars universe. The fact that in the box you also get Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker as a bonus is great and saves you about another 30 to 40 pounds.